G'day folks, this week's video will be chatting about how I've winterized the system to look after the fish while we keep the plants growing happily and yeah, just give you a bit of a general update on what's going on with the aquaponics. So to begin with, we'll have a bit of a gander at these fellas in here. As you can see, they're not particularly active. There's a couple there that want a little bit of feed. Uh, basically, the fish we grow here are called jade perch. They're an Australian native. They like a warmer climate. So this cool weather we are experiencing at the moment is a little bit chilly for them. So they basically slow right down. At the moment, the water temperature is sitting at 17 degrees Celsius which is a little bit below uh, the minimum that I like to feed them at. I generally like to feed them at around about 19 degrees or higher. I did toss some feed in the other day when the water temp was sitting around about 18 degrees, but as you can see, yeah, they just weren't as voracious as they normally are. So what I ended up doing was going out and buying another heater. You might be able to see a second heater there. I've got two leads going in there just to try and keep that water temperature up to around about 18 degrees. The main reason being is it's been a little bit cooler this winter than it has the last couple of years and I have seen a couple of people with water temperature already hit around about the 10 degree mark which is not very good for these fellas at all so I thought there's a bit of an insurance policy I'll pop that heater in and we'll see how we go and as you saw before with water temps of around about 17 degrees pretty happy with that. Uh, one thing I have done to try and keep the water a little bit warmer is reduce the flow into the system. As you can see, there's not as much water covering the um, solar's lifting outlet pipe. By the way, that's just spire slime and algae. No great big deal there. And you might be able to make out over the back there, the water flow has dropped considerably to what it was the other day. So that, in theory, will reduce the changeover exchange rate in here for the fish, which means the water will be in here longer, hopefully so it can be heated by those little heaters down in there. Now I'm not too concerned about ammonia building up in here because they're not being fed. So there's just what they would normally release through their gills. Um, no extra uh, feed, high protein feed for them to metabolize and, you know, basically cause issues down the line. Uh, as a result, the radial flow settler hasn't been emptied. So that's uh, one job I'm not really having to do at the moment. And the only other thing I'm really doing at the moment is just um, topping up the sump tank as the water level drops because we, up until the other day, had a fairly large amount of plant or vegetative growth in the system. You might be able to see some nasturtium I still haven't pulled out. Uh, basically took all the nasturtiums out of that bathtub bed over there, mainly because I was seeing a few deficiencies creep in. We had a lot of rain, a lot of water overflow from the system. So just something for you folks to consider. If you are cutting down on the feed through the cooler months, the plants aren't, aren't going to be getting the same sort of nutrition levels. So it does pay for you to remove any plants that aren't overly productive. We've got a few others in here as well. We've got things like the aloe vera over the back there that isn't exactly um, something we need to be growing in the system right now because we have a load down the back, as well as that chili there. Uh, something we really don't need to be sucking out nutrients, but I'm just letting it go because I've got a soft spot for it. And the same as our oregano in here, or oregano. Um, just sneak the camera in. A massive patch. We're not using anywhere, you know, near enough to justify that bigger patch. So that might be something I'll look at cutting back a little bit as well. Uh, just so we aren't using as many nutrients on plants that don't really need it. And that way the majority of it can go into the broccoli in there and some of the other plants we have on the grow at the moment. So all that I decided to do was just take all the nasturtiums out of there because they're basically robbing nutrients from plants like these bok choy here and also all the um, broccoli over in that little netted off bed. The greenery didn't go to waste, it's just gone down into a slow compost cage we have on the go at the moment. Now down here we have a sweet potato that is rooted in the ground and that actually came from this bathtub bed. Um, I did post a video a while back about a mutant sweet potato we harvested about here. You can check it out, link up there and down in the description. There was a little bit left in here that was still growing. I had cut it off the main plant. You might be able to make out down there. We have some roots sticking out the side of this root pouch and that was basically the uh, sweet potato had set roots into there as well as a few places in the clay there and was um, getting all its nutrients from there and just basically grew over the edge down here onto the ground where it's taken root. So we're just going to leave that there. I just pulled off all these sections here that were growing over the um, top of the bathtub. And yeah, we might get a couple of tubers out of here. Worst case scenario, we've got some rootstock. 
or some slips even that we can start off next season's crop because that was an okay sweet tatey. Uh, up in here we have um, our ginger. This is the ginger that I popped in a pouch a number of months ago now. It was a bit of a late start to the season but as you can see we've got some nice rhizomes there. A little shoot tried to start off but it's just a little bit chilly. But as you can see from the rest of the plant it's still growing nice and green. Definitely a lot better than these plants here up on the deck. They've already started to die off. Down here we also have the water chestnuts and you can tell they're dying off due to the cool weather as well. I uh, did harvest a handful out of here the other day uh, when I was taking the sturtiums out and we tossed them into a masaman curry. Um, not a traditional uh, ingredient in a masaman curry but they're nice and crunchy so yeah I like to add them into that sort of thing. Also go very nice in the uh, little parcels that Bianca makes up, the little dumping dumplings, wontons as well. Before we go around and I show you that other pouch in the bathtub bed, I thought I'd show you these guys. Uh, these bok choy were planted out all together, so we have little clusters over here in this one. I think there's three there. Uh, there's a couple over there, three here, three here, and just that single one. Yeah, I, I pretty much will just decided to plant them all out without separating them. Uh, my, the theory being that you know there's a lot of nutrients that wash by these roots. They don't really need to be separated. Same goes for hydroponics, and I found that I can plant things a lot closer, a lot denser, and get away with it. As every clump matures, we'll just knock off the largest one and then just um, harvest them that way. And my sister brought around uh, some plants that didn't fit in hers and mum's veggie pods. So we've got some more broccoli that'll go out and some lettuce as well. So those refugees will probably end up in this bed. And I'm thinking about finally clearing out the rest of that bed and maybe putting the lettuce in over there. And this here is just a bell siphon I took a photo for. Um, I'm actually doing consultations again and um, Len wanted to have a bit of a gander at a bell siphon um, design. Just quickly, the web page for the consultations is almost finished. I just want to make up a bit of a video through this week and I'll put that up there just to explain how the consultation service works. So if you are interested in getting a bit of a um, leg up, starting up your own aquaponics system or you've got a few issues and you want to chat with someone with a few years experience, um, yeah, that might be able to help you out. So I'll pop a link down in the description uh, just over to the rough page. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll get something worked out today. And then, um, yeah, once it goes live, just come back and you can book a time if you're interested. So that's enough spruiking. Before we go look at the broccoli and the other root pouch in the bathtub bed, I thought I'd show you these guys. These are the other water chestnuts we have. This started off with a single corn that I missed from last year's harvest, just growing in this corner. And it's pretty much all taken over this whole little tote. So uh, it's just the time of year they start to die off. Um, really do need to harvest them though because we have had a lot of rain and they're going to end up um, rotting in there if I leave them much longer. Aren't they little Ludo? Oh, he's camera shy. Um, so yeah, I do need to get those guys out. Uh, this bed here will have probably the lettuce put in there. I'm just going to pop it in this area over here. Quickly over here to the bathtub bed. This pouch here has a couple of very manky looking spuds in it. I let a whole heap chit a little bit too long. Just life has been very busy here at the moment, hence why I haven't done the biofilter um, video for you folks. So um, yeah, they were just a little bit too far gone, but it popped two in there anyway. I posted a picture on social media and a few people, including Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm, suggested that yeah, I could still get a yield from them. So I have saved the rest and we'll put them out in a um, wicking bed uh, a bit later on. Uh, speaking of wicking beds, I did have in here, just growing down the side there, some sweet potato. It was just cuttings from the uh, sweet potato that was harvested out of that little bathtub bed. They, yeah, they're taking over again, crowding out the broccoli. You can see they pushed that one down over the back there. So I decided to pull them out and I've set them up in a wicking barrel down the back. They won't grow much of a root through winter here, but it gives them somewhere to live until things warm up. Uh, in here, we haven't had much pest pressure, but I have noticed some of the um, cluster caterpillars in here. And if I can move these leaves without breaking them, I'll show you some. There we go, there's a couple of them down in there. So even though this netting is keeping out the cabbage butterfly, we're getting these cluster caterpillars, uh, basically a moth, and they will lay th hundreds if not thousands of eggs uh, in a couple of positions. And as soon as these little fellas put on a little bit of size, they can smash through a whole crop in no time flat. So I'm just coming through and squishing them at the moment. So I think there's a few others down in here as well, but 
I'll um, finish filming this video, come back and give them a squish. Um, yeah, so these guys will get a dipole, um, just the family bits and pieces going on. I haven't been paying a lot of attention to this. So they'll get a spray with the BT, uh, which is the dipole. And then, um, yeah, I'll come down and plant out those other plants. So a few folks here in Australia who are experiencing a chillier than normal winter, I do hope those tips helped uh, when it comes to trying to c retain as many nutrients as you can in the system to grow the veg we want to harvest and eat. I hope everyone has enjoyed the video. It's been a while since I've done just a bit of a general um, update on the aquaponics, I think, from memory. So it's brought everyone up to date. Uh, special thanks really needs to go out to you folks who are supporting the channel by coming along every week and saying good day and leaving a comment down in the comment section. Really do appreciate it. I haven't had a chance to catch up on the last couple of videos, but I'll, I'll try and get that um, done this week. Um, spend some time catching up with you folks down in the comment section. Uh, special thanks as well needs to go to you folks supporting us through the Farm Your Own Yard Patreon website and also the YouTube membership channel. Thank you very much. Don't forget, I do have the Beginner's Aquaponics Guide if you need a bit of a leg up. It's an online video guide. Description uh, will have a link and also the upcoming consultations. There'll be a link down there for them as well so you can suss out what it's all about. As I said before, it's not a done, finished web page yet, uh, but I will be posting the proper links and letting everyone know via a video here on YouTube once it's all sorted. Anyway, that's enough of me prattling on. I've got to nip up the coast and pick up some nutcrackers because I've sold out. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics is booming. And I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.